Hi, I'm Christian Vihan, and today we will be looking at how to measure for an Apollo dry suit. In order to get the best from your dry suit, correct fit is everything. An Apollo dry suit is a long term and valuable investment. It's important to take the time to get the initial measurements right. So sit back and let's enter the world of dry suit measurements. This is Mark Preble. Today, with the aid of my faithful sidekick, Timothy Bonner, we'll be measuring him for an Apollo dry suit. When measuring for a dry suit, all measurements are skin measurements, and it's a good idea to take a measurement several times to ensure an accurate reading. A good trick I've learned is to mark a point on the wall, say 150 centimeters, and use this as a reference point to make all subsequent measurements in the case your tape isn't long enough to make one measurement. First measurement is height. Now this is measured standing without shoes against a wall, the measurement being taken with the ruler from the top of the head. Now we see Tim measuring the height, 150 plus an additional 30 makes Mark's height 180 centimetres. Number two is weight, and Mark weighs 75 kilograms. I'll be referring to point A during the measurement process. Now, point A is a large vertebrae at the base of the neck. I'll ask the person being measured to lean their neck forward, and it's the prominent bone at the base of the neck. It's a good idea to mark it with a whiteboard texture to use as a reference point in future measurements. The first body measurement we have for you this afternoon is the general height. Now the general height is taken from point A to the centre of the inner ankle bone. This measurement is taken as a straight line without going into the hollow of the back. Mark's general height is 147 centimetres. Now for the neck. This is taken below the Adam's apple at the slenderest point and it's 39.5 centimetres. Measurement number five is the back height. This is taken from the anus to point A. It's important that the client remain upright while this measurement is being taken. 76 centimetres for this measurement. The next measurement is the top bust upper chest, number six. Mark raises his arms the measurement is taken through the armpit and it's important that the tape remain horizontal while taking the measurement and then drop the arms into a relaxed position. This measurement is 107.5. Number seven up now, the bust measurement. This is similar to the upper chest, you just drop the tape and it's taken through the nipples. Again, make sure the tape remains horizontal. 101 is Mark's bust measurement. Number eight now, the abdominal measurement, similar to the upper chest and bust measurement, this time taken a little bit above the navel at the thinnest point. Let your stomach out, Mark. This measurement is 82. Number nine now, the lower abdomen. This measurement is taken at the fattest part of the abdomen. 86 for this. 
Number 10 now, the buttock circumference. This is best taken side on and is taken at the most prominent or fattest part of the buttock. And it's 98 centimetres. Arms to your side in a relaxed position for number 11, the shoulder width. It's a good idea to locate the midpoint of the shoulder and Tim was going to do this by taking a line through the curve of the shoulder to find the midpoint. Repeat the same thing for the other shoulder. Once you have located both midpoints, the measurement can be taken from shoulder to shoulder going through point A. Mark has a shoulder width of 48. Number 12, the sleeve length, is taken with the arm raised at a 45 degree angle. The measurement is taken from point A to the wrist bone going through the extreme point of the shoulder. The sleeve length is 78. Number 13, the arm length, again, is taken with the arm raised in a 45 degree angle. This measurement is taken from the midpoint of the shoulder down to the wrist bone. 57 for this measurement. With the arm raised in a 45 degree angle, we take measurement number 14, the shoulder joint. This is taken from the armpit going vertical over the shoulder. Mark's shoulder joint is 46.5. Next up, number 15, is the upper arm circumference. Again, the arm is raised in a 45 degree angle and we go round the upper arm through the armpit. And in this case, it's 33.5. The bicep circumference is measurement number 16. This is taken again with the arm at a 45 degree angle and the measurement taken at the largest point. And this time we have 28.5. And we move on to number 17, the elbow circumference. Uh, this measurement is to be taken at the slenderest point. No, no, up. There we go. And we have 26 centimetres. Forearm coming up, which is number 18. And this measurement will be taken immediately below the elbow at the largest point. And Mark's forearm is 29 centimetres. The wrist measurement, number 19, this is the slenderest part of the wrist, and we're going to take this measurement below the wrist bone. I usually advise Timothy to do both wrists to get the slenderest part. So, on the right hand we have 17.5. Now moving over to his left wrist, and that is 17. So we take the slender one, which is 17. Up next, number 20, under the crotch ask the client to hold a ruler on its flat comfortably beneath the crotch. Then the measurement is taken from the ruler to the middle of the inner ankle bone. And we have a reading of 76.5. In at number 21 is the thigh the largest circumference. Measurement taken from the largest part of the thigh. Mark's thigh, at its largest, is 57. The 22nd measurement is the thigh, intermediate circumference. We'll take this measurement halfway between the crotch and the knee, and the measurement is the circumference of the thigh. In this case, it's 50.5 centimetres. Moving down, we have the above-knee circumference, which is the 23rd measurement. This is taken immediately above the kneecap, where it becomes slender and the above knee circumference for Mark is 41 centimetres. Measurement 24 is the below knee circumference. Again, taken immediately below the kneecap where it becomes slender and we have 34 centimetres. The calf circumference is measurement 25 and this is the largest part of the calf. In this case, it's 37 centimetres. Moving down to the ankle, which is our 26th measurement, and it's taken immediately above the inner ankle bone at the slenderest point. Mark's ankle measurement is 21 centimetres.
Number 27, the lower leg length. For this measurement, Tim is going to take from the protruding bone of the inner side of the knee to the centre of the inner ankle bone. And Mark's lower leg length is 43.5. Number 28 is head circumference, pretty straightforward. We'll take the largest part of the head and it's 56.5 centimetres in circumference. Our last measurement is number 29, the foot length. This is taken from the heel to the tip of the toes while standing with weight on one foot. Measure both feet and use the largest measurement. Mark's foot is 27 centimetres in length and we add one centimetre to take into account the wearing of socks which makes his foot length 28 centimetres. However, had Mark's foot been 27.6 centimetres, we would round up to 28 centimetres and again add 1 centimetre for the wearing of socks, which would give us 29 centimetres. The minimum additional size required for a comfortable fit is at least half a centimetre. That concludes our measuring class. I'd like to thank my faithful sidekick, Mr. Timothy Bonner, and the able-bodied Mark Preble.